This aircraft was a German dive bomber and ground attack aircraft used during World War II. Known for its distinctive inverted gull wings and fixed spatted undercarriage, it was used in the invasions of Poland, Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France, and was also deployed in the Balkans, Africa, and the Mediterranean. Despite its effectiveness against ground targets, it was vulnerable to fighter aircraft and required a heavy escort to operate effectively. Despite this, it remained in service until the end of the war due to a lack of a better replacement. Junkers Ju-87 Stuka A total of 6,000 aircrafts were built between 1936 and 1944, with Oberst Hans Ulrich Rudel becoming the most successful pilot and the most highly decorated German pilot of the war. Design The Ju-87 was a single-engine all-metal cantilever monoplane. It had a fixed undercarriage and could carry a two-person crew. The main construction material was duralumin, and the external coverings were made of duralumin sheeting. The airframe was also subdivided into sections to allow transport by road or rail. The wings were of standard Junkers double-wing construction. This gave the Ju-87 considerable advantage on takeoff, even at a shallow angle, large lift forces were created through the aerofoil, reducing takeoff and landing runs. The fuselage had an oval cross-section and housed, in most examples, a Junkers Jumo 211 water-cooled inverted V-12 engine. The cockpit was protected from the engine by a firewall ahead of the wing center section where the fuel tanks were located. The wing was the most unusual feature. It consisted of a single center section and two outer sections installed using four universal joints. The center section had a large negative dihedral and the outer surfaces a positive dihedral. This created the inverted gull, or cranked, wing pattern along the leading edge. The shape of the wing improved the pilot's ground visibility and also allowed a shorter undercarriage height. The Ju-87 Stuka was well known for its distinctive sirens. These sirens, called Jericho trumpets, were mounted on the underside of the wings and were meant to intimidate enemy troops as the aircraft descended for a bombing run. The sirens would produce a loud, wailing sound that could be heard from a distance, adding to the psychological impact of the Stuka's attacks. The Ju-87 was designed to dive at a steep angle, with the sirens adding to the sense of danger and destruction. Despite its effectiveness in this role, the Ju-87 became increasingly vulnerable as the war progressed and was eventually phased out in favor of newer aircraft. Diving Procedure Flying at 4,600 meters, 15,100 feet, the pilot located his target through a bombsite window in the cockpit floor. The pilot moved the dive lever to the rear, limiting the throw of the control column. The dive brakes were activated automatically, the pilot set the trim tabs, reduced his throttle and closed the coolant flaps. The aircraft then rolled 180 degrees, automatically nosing the aircraft into a dive. Red tabs protruded from the upper surfaces of the wing as a visual indicator to the pilot that, in case of a G-force induced blackout, the automatic dive recovery system would be activated. The Stuka dived in a 60 to 90 degrees angle, holding a constant speed of 500 to 600 kilometers per hour. 310 to 370 miles per hour, due to dive brake deployment, which increased the accuracy of the Ju-87's aim. 
when the aircraft was reasonably close to the target, a light on the contact altimeter came on to indicate the bomb release point, usually at a minimum height of 450 meters, 1,480 feet. The pilot released the bomb and initiated the automatic pull-out mechanism by depressing a knob on the control column. An elongated U-shaped crutch located under the fuselage swung the bomb out of the way of the propeller, and the aircraft automatically began a 6G pullout. Once the nose was above the horizon, dive brakes were retracted, the throttle was opened, and the propeller was set to climb. The pilot regained control and resumed normal flight. The coolant flaps had to be reopened quickly to prevent overheating. The automatic pullout was not liked by all pilots. Helmut Malky later said that he and his unit disconnected the system because it allowed the enemy to predict the Ju-87's recovery pattern and height, making it easier for ground defenses to hit an aircraft. Eric Winkle Brown RN, a British test pilot and commanding officer of No. 1426 Flight RAF, tested the Ju-87 at RAE Farnborough. He said of the Stuka, I had flown a lot of dive bombers and it's the only one that you can dive truly vertically. Sometimes with the dive bombers, maximum dive is usually in the order of 60 degrees. When flying the Stuka, because it's all automatic, you are really flying vertically. The Stuka was in a class of its own. Operational History Among the many German aircraft designs that participated in the Condor Legion, and as part of other German involvement in the Spanish Civil War, a single Ju-87, the V-4 prototype, was assigned to experimental staffel of the Legion's fighter wing. The aircraft was secretly loaded onto the ship Usuramo and departed Hamburg Harbor on the night of August 1, 1936, arriving in Cadiz five days later. The only known information pertaining to its combat career in Spain is that it was piloted by Hermann Buer and took part in the nationalist offensive against Bilbao in 1937. Presumably the aircraft was then secretly returned to Germany. At the beginning of the World War II all Stuka units were moved to Germany's eastern border in preparation for the invasion of Poland. On the morning of August 15, 1939, during a mass formation dive bombing demonstration for high-ranking commanders of the Luftwaffe at training grounds near Sagan, 13 Ju-87 and 26 crew members were lost when they crashed into the ground almost simultaneously. The planes dived through cloud, expecting to release their practice bombs and pull out of the dive once below the cloud ceiling, unaware that the ceiling was too low and unexpected ground mist formed, leaving them no time to pull out of the dive. The Ju-87 was heavily used during the early years of the war, particularly in the invasion of Poland and the Battle of Britain. It was also used in the North African campaign and on the Eastern Front. However, as the war progressed and Allied forces developed more advanced aircraft, the Ju-87 became increasingly vulnerable. It was eventually phased out of use in favor of newer models. Despite its limitations, the Ju-87 played a significant role in the early victories of the German military and remains a well-known aircraft from World War II. Post-war research revealed that generally, bombing pilots were far less effective than they claimed, but the German Luftwaffe, in particular, did not do a scientific analysis of the Ju-87 pilot claims in 1939-1945, but instead relied on pre-war tests and assumptions, contrary to the Allies who did such research during the war which revealed the ineffectiveness of dive bombers as an anti-tank weapon which revealed that pilots, for a number of reasons, misjudged almost of their tank kills, except for the suppression effect of the bombing. If you enjoy these types of videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. It will help YouTube algorithm to serve more viewers like you. Thank you.